financial advisor and a lawyer walk into a bar? And then what happens, Dave? Well, the question that we come up with is, Jeepers, what's the tech that businesses are using in 2023? IT, eh? IT. Mm. Uh, IT for SMEs, that's the topic for today. And, and thankfully, we've got a guest, because if you and I try to talk about it, Dave, I don't think it would go very far. Yeah, God help us all. <laughs> yeah, it would be an interesting discussion. So we've got uh, Sebastian from SSDL. He's the owner and the uh, operator of SSDL, which is a specialist IT a consulting firm who do our IT, I should disclose up front. Uh, they do the IT for, for lots of sort of SME enterprises, and he knows everything there is to know about uh, IT for small businesses. So, so, no um, pressure. <laughs> welcome, Jeff. Thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, that's a pleasure. Um, so the first thing for me is um, it's a bit of a black box. We sort of mentioned it just before when we were chatting that, that most, I think, business owners, they know they've got a computer. They know they've got a bunch of computers. They know they've got some, some um, software on it and all that. But really, we don't know kind of how it all operates. We don't know what we should be spending on IT. We don't. It's all sort of a bit of a mystery, which we know when it's broken and we get upset about it, but we don't really know what we should be doing. You restart your machines, the first yeah. thing, isn't yeah. it? Right. Have yeah. you restarted? Oh, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, should everyone, should all businesses have an IT person and, and should they be doing something every month with their IT or, you know, talk us through what you think sort of, and we're talking to a general business owner, so obviously it's going to be different for different businesses, but should we all have an IT consulting company that's on the books every month? Is that what you'd say? Yeah, look, definitely. In regards to a lot of organisations, whether they're, you know, small, medium, large, um, you know, realistically, they're going to have some sort of a, department or some sort of a need um you know these days suppose you can't get away from technology yep. um, and you know as business owners you know what you guys do is, is what you specialize in so a lot of the times what you find is that you know tech sometimes gets a little bit sort of bewildering a little bit sort of over the clock you know as you mentioned you know sometimes it's just you know it's that room in the in the, in the corner that you know has things and and does stuff and when it doesn't work that's when you when you call and you've got issues yeah um, Generally, what we find for, for a lot of organisations is that, um, you know, those that are proactive um, yeah. in making sure that their systems are up to date, you know, that they're, they're outsourcing that, that they're having a look at the environment because it's changing so quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not uh, abreast of what's happening in your industry, what's happening, you know, with other organisations, um, it's quite easy to fall behind and, and, you know, really, you know, lose any competitive advantage that you may have. Um, yeah. You know, your, your competitors are becoming smarter, they're working remotely, they're, they're bringing their costs down, um, you know, they're, they're increasing their uptime. Um, so, so there's a lot of variables that a lot of, you know, small to medium-sized businesses need to, to look at, um, yeah. whether that be, you know, the day-to-day -day devices that people use. Yeah. Um, historically, a lot of businesses are, um, you know, inclined to sweat assets for as long as possible so you know they'll they'll use a, a laptop for an employee for five six seven years yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Alex, Alex is smiling there he's like of course yeah. we do <laughs> yeah, we're our laptops every two years or, you know. yeah, yeah. yeah correct because I suppose the way that you have to think about it the way how quickly and how rapidly technology and applications and online yeah. cloud is is happening um, you know you're, you're, you're needing more resources in those devices yeah. Um, what we find a lot of the times, unfortunately, when we sort of go in and, and, and meet with new customers is that, you know, they may be running, you know, five-year-old, six-year-old hardware where you talk to the staff and they're like, yeah, you know, tell me about your day, you know, understanding their processes to try to, you know, improve efficiencies. And they'll be like, yeah, I come in in the morning, I'll turn my computer on, then I'll go and make a cup of coffee and then I'll come back and then hopefully by the time I'm there, it's, it's logged in and ready to go. Right. You know, and as a business owner... Um, you know, you sort of look at that and you're like, well, you know, I've got to spend a couple of grand on, on a new machine or something that's yeah. going to be able to produce. But unfortunately, a lot of smaller businesses, um, you know, don't see the value in, uh, you know, maintaining those devices to, to create right. that efficiency. So, you know, yeah, you know, spending a couple of grand up front for a new device or whatever it might be. Um, you know, is a bit of a hit. But when you have a look at, you know, things like, you know, your staff retention, your staff happiness, um, you know, being able to provide your staff with with all those features and things that they're expecting, um, you know, creating that culture of, of uh, you know, innovation and those sorts of things, um, you generally find, uh, and especially over COVID, those were the businesses that really thrived. 
Um, so that's really a false economy, though, isn't it? I mean, this is part of it. People go, well, I'm I'm paying out this money to buy a new machine for someone, but then you look at it on the other side and as the employee that sits there and says, well, yeah, I'll come in in the morning, I started, hopefully the machine's up and running in 10 minutes. You've then got to start to look at it from a productivity point of view, but also for an employee that says, oh, why do I want to stay here? They're never spending any money on the technology. Yeah. I can't really feel that I'm, you know, performing at my optimal best because the equipment that's provided me for me to do my job is, is suboptimal, which then you come to the challenge of, well, now I've got to replace that person. So the yeah. cost of a $2,000 machine has now actually cost you about five grand or more yeah. because you've got to spend time to go replace that person. So well, I, I think a lot of it, people look at it and see it as a, um, yes, it is a sunk cost, but it's also a way that you've got to maintain to attract the right people into your yeah. business and having your technology that. platform. Look, I know all that, and that makes sense to me. But the issue I know I have, and I'm sure other owners feel the same, is you sort of go, if I buy a new machine, will that be better? I don't know. Is it RAM? Is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> oh, here's a big word for Alex. He's, pu- he's pulled out the only technology word he knows. Or is it my internet speed that's the problem? Or is it? Is it that my operating yeah. system that I'm I've, that I'm renting? You know, we've got a this management system is it that that's slowing things down or you know like the the issue i have is it's all such a sort of a mystery that i go well i could spend two thousand dollars and maybe i could be better off or maybe i could be the same as i was before you know and it's sort of it's i don't know like you know i'm all for for keeping the team happy and i'm all for activity increases absolutely but you know you sort of don't know is a new computer going to help all those things yeah definitely and i suppose that's also part of the thing where you know where you're you're initially engaging with a partner um, to have a look at that because, you know, they should really be having a look and having a discussion about your business and getting a good yeah. understanding of what you use. Um, yeah. You know, what do you use? What do your staff use? What are your plans for the future? Yeah. Um, you know, what are, you, what are your requirements? Do you have any compliance, any legal requirements for your data? Yeah. Those sorts of things, mm-hmm. you know, having a really good understanding of the landscape to yeah. be able to give you, you know, some clear, decisive information to say that, you know, hey, you've got five-year-old machines, but you've got 15 people running off an ADSL connection. Um, well, exactly. Yeah. 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 So is so, that then? So so then, should you, if that's the situation, should you then take it a step back and and um, do a, a like a, a technology or an IT audit to sort of say, right, this is where you currently sit versus here's where the market potentially would be for the size of your organisation. Now that may mean, and I agree. I think in some instances in some industries you know your level of technology and sophistication will be greater than others and, and i come back to your point alex i agree you know just because you throw money at it doesn't mean that it's yeah. going to improve i mean i'm happy to spend the money but let me spend it in the right places but also yeah. as part of an audit or a progression plan that it might be if you're going to do one thing and there's six things on the list do this one thing first and then that may actually assist in helping two or three of the other items on the list that may still need to be improved, but you've got to get your number one thing first, which again comes back to the issue. Is it the machine or is it the infrastructure that gets the information around? Yeah. Where's the lesser of the two evils really? And you, your IT consultant should be able to tell you that. Is that is that right, Seb? Yeah, so realistically in regards to, you know, when you're onboarding someone for the first time, you know, you, yeah. really, you really need to be able to sit down and have a look at the business and have a look at, you know, what's what's the plan moving forward. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's no point in recommending servers um, or physical infrastructure into an office that is planning on, you know, implementing more work from home policies. Yeah. Um, you know, you might want to look at cloud alternatives. You might want to have a look at other, you know, applications that you've got available, um, you know, within your industry um, yeah. that will enable... Um, you know, productivity, um, you know, for, for everyone. Um, yeah. Rather than okay. sort of, you know, coming in and thinking, well, you know, we've had these servers here for 10 years, you know, let's get some more servers. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, that's going to make things better. Well, it's, it's not necessarily mm. the case um, because, right. you know, as, as we're all aware as, as to how quick technology changes and how much, uh, how many applications are available online these days, um, you know, that are industry specific, um, yeah. that do, you know, 80, 90% of, of what you need them to do. Mm-hmm. Um, provides a whole, you know, new level of flexibility for, for organisations and business owners to sort of have a look at. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that we found, you know, over, over the years, and I suppose COVID has been a really strong driver for, you know, obviously remote working, working from home, um, yeah. collaboration, um, changing 
um, people's perception and, and really business owners because, you know, historically a lot of business owners, you know, they want to be able to touch and feel and they want to, you know, be able to see their staff every day and those sorts of things. Um, you know, having a look how, at how, you know, cloud um, remote working and all those sorts of things has enabled a lot of businesses to, to increase productivity, um, you know, increase job satisfaction, um, you know, work-life balance and all those sorts of things. So, yeah. yeah. We certainly, we work from home a lot more than we used to and we certainly found it's increased job satisfaction and, and work-life balance by a lot because the, the travel time is obviously now time that you can either spend with your family or working. Um, and so, you know... Preferably working for you. Working for me. <laughs> You can have a kid once and then you can get <laughs> work an hour. You get five minutes and that's it. You're back on the tools. So, so that's, been, that's been a big help. Um, uh, but I, find, I mean, when I became, when I was a junior lawyer, what we used to do, if I wanted a senior lawyer to look at my work, I would, you know, type up a letter or whatever and I'd print it out and I'd put it in their inbox and they would amend it. And then they would give it back to me, like with a red pen, and then they'd give it back to me and I'd make the changes or possibly a PA would make the changes and then possibly print it out again to them. And, do, and that, that was the process, right? And you'd stick it on, you'd, you'd paperclip it on the front of the file, which was a physical file. If I got an email, I printed it out and popped it on the file, or punched it and whacked it on the file. That was the, that was the and this is, this is not that long ago, right? When you I was don't a look that old, Alex. Ten years ago, right? <laughs> But now what we do is if, I just, you know, if my team wants me to look at something, they just send me the link and I look at the actual document. Yeah. And it changes in the document and then it's all there. And I can just it's just a, a simple, a small example of what's probably saved everyone an hour a day of mucking around. Everyone is just tons more efficient as a result of, you know, our practice management system facilitates that. And we're all working from the actual document so there can be no confusion about versions and all. And, you know, it's just a small example of the kind of productivity. And we have to pay for this practice management system. It's significantly expensive. It's been significantly expensive. But it's, you know, the efficiencies are just really incredible. I mean, technology, the, the way it can deliver, you know, we're still doing the same leap work, if you like, but we're just doing it in a way that's far more efficient. And we can do it from home now. And, you know, we, we had a, 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 an employee who worked was it on the farm in the morning, you know, on the tractor in Tasmania, and then she was at working from home that afternoon. In, in Tasmania working for us and in the past if she wanted to work in Tasmania she'd have to get a job done so it was just you know it's been I mean I'm, I am just 100% on board with technology I think that the, the risk that I, or the, what I is that I don't understand it and so I don't know what we should be buying or not buying or I don't know like we spent a whole bunch on Adobe Acrobat or whatever this is all the <laughs> we spend too much I don't know is it, is it expensive I don't know is it cheap I don't know uh, you know, can, can your consult, can, like, should your IT consultant be able to check with other industries and look or look at what's standard and see are you overspending or underspending or, you know, is that a reasonable thing to ask of, of an IT person? So let me just, I just want to jump in, Sebastian. I yeah. just want to remind our listeners today, we're, we're talking about, um, you know, IT within businesses and specifically within the SME market and just how much it's evolved and, and ticked along. And I'll add on to that comment that um, Sebastian's about to increase your rates, um, Alex, because clearly you're not, you're clearly <laughs> you're not paying enough. You're paying too much in Adobe or not enough? I don't know. Uh, clearly not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's expensive, but we all need it because we're dealing with PDFs all day, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that in regards to things like, you know, licensing or all those sorts of things, realistically, you know, you're, you're better off handing off those responsibilities to, to a provider. Um, right. That's able to manage that for you. Um, and I think, you know, in a previous podcast, you guys were sort of discussing around a administration, administration yep. rights, all those sorts of things. And that sort of falls in line with things like onboarding and offboarding, you know, individuals. Um, yep. Having that process to say, you know, hey, I've got Joe Blog starting on Monday. Um, you know, do you really want to be wasting your time buying a license, enabling, you know, a user in Adobe and then contacting your IT provider to do other stuff when realistically you should be saying, hey, I've got Joe Blogs, this is their name, this is their title, this is their details, um, this is what we need. Um, and you guys set it up and then they come in yep. on Monday and they're ready to go. Yep. And um, can, you, can I just give you a plug on that asset? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know, because we obviously have people come on board. Hey, on board. No, one on board to that. <laughs> You know, we say to Sebastian, you know, we've got this person starting exactly that. Here's their name and, and their details. And it comes back to the, before you know it, they've got a computer in their hand that's got everything on it. It's got the email set up. It's got, you know, their sign off, everything, all all sorts of fiddly, annoying stuff that would take us ages and we'd stuff up. Well, you have no idea how to do. No, <laughs> not a clue. Yeah, and if we did, people, senior people would be spending a lot of time on it, you know, when they could be doing more efficient or more productive things. It's, it's fantastic, and that's a, that's a great example of 
what SSDL can do for, for people listening. If you're looking for a good IT provider, SSDL are here. They certainly do a great job for us on, on exactly that. And it's just a, it's just a, a load off our mind. You know? Which yeah. I think also goes back to the point, you know, do what you do best mm. and, and find a good partner that, you, that, that does what they do best. Yeah. Like it's not, I, I, I think a lot of people, oh, no, but I want this control mechanism. I want, so, no, no, who? Yeah, Find what you love to do and do best and mm. bring on someone who does a much better job at that area, particularly in technology, and yeah. let them come up with the solutions and, and the new opportunities that are available for you. Mm. So one of the other questions that I'm curious on is just, to, just to, I suppose, in, in um, to put things into context, how much do you think we've, um, from a technology point of view, we've come in, even, even, I mean, if we talk the last five years and, and specifically within the COVID, I mean, what, what was it like from five years ago to where we are now? And, and even for your own business, Sebastian, what impact has that had? Yeah, look, really, look, leaps and bounds, like technology at the moment is just in hyperspeed. Um, you know, if, if you start talking about things like AI, you know, probably a hot topic at the moment, you know, globally and all those sorts of things. If you have a look at, you know, how quickly and how rapidly that within itself, um, you know, has only sort of hit mainstream probably in the last three to six months, mm. you know, how quickly that's changing, evolving and, and, you know, creating, you know, positives, but also, you know, opportunities and risks with it as well. Um, um, compared to five years ago, um, you know, having a look at, you know, it's, it's funny, you know, a lot, a lot of, there's a lot of memes that go around that sort of say, you know, what made you, you know, move to the cloud or, or you know, move to collaboration and, you know, it was COVID. It, it, it was that, you know, even though, you know, we've been speaking to a lot of organisations for years saying, hey, you know, you need to create a hybrid workplace. You need to start looking at technology using, you know, what's available out there to, to improve your business, become more efficient. Um, it's just amazing how rapidly uh, things evolved, especially in the last couple of years when COVID kicked in. Uh, that all of a sudden, you know, businesses were screaming, saying, you know, hey, I've got to send everyone home. What do we do? Um, yeah. Was that fear for people not doing it previously or was it just, it was just seen as, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll kind of get to it? Yeah, I, I think it was, you know, initially it was, it was, you know, a lot of business owners sort of fearing, you know, if I, if I send people working from home, um, you know, are they going to be productive? They're not going to yep. be as productive. You know, yep. I don't feel safe because I don't know they'll be there and, and I can't hand them that yep. document and I can't you know, ask people a question straight away, um, which is obviously not the case. Um, but, you know, that, that uh, I suppose, requirement that that happened from COVID where we had, you know, went into lockdowns and it was really about, for a lot of businesses, it was about survival. Yep. Um, it was about yep. having a look at what they could do and as quickly as possible, you know, change their business practices, uh, you know, change their internal policies and the way that they did things within within a couple of years. Um, and, you know, that's sort of progressed on over the last couple of years even further. Um, you know, historically, you know, five years ago, um, you know, I think that, you know, the adoption of things like laptops, you know, a lot of people wanted wanted PCs because they, they went into the office, they had a PC, they wouldn't think twice about taking a laptop home. Yeah. Um, you know, I need a laptop. You, need, you want me to work from home? I don't want to work from home. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, that's now it's the opposite, thought. isn't it? Like, what, yeah. you want me to come back into the office? No, 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 I'll just work from home on my laptop, thanks. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, like the, the, the change in, in, you know, even device demand, you know, the, the device numbers for, for PCs and those sorts of things have, have obviously over the years, you know, gone down, whereas laptops and, you know, tablets and, and those sorts of devices are obviously increasing to be able to create that versatility for, for employees to, to be able to function as they need. So yeah. what's your view on the which they refer to as, you know, the company provides a piece of equipment for you versus uh, some places now saying, we'll bring your own device. So, so you know, what what's the, I suppose, to, to, you know, outline and explain the difference between the two, but also what, what some of the risks might be for a business to allow that to occur? Yeah, I think that that's a really, a really interesting point because, from a, from a company owned device, you know, generally you'll find that it'll be an organization that's probably a little bit better structured, um, you know, that has got things in place in regards to, you know, when a person comes on board, um, they may have, you know, certain uh, processes and applications and, and, you know, policies that they sort of put into place. Um, what we find is that sometimes, unfortunately, you know, small businesses will ask people to bring their own devices without taking into consideration the risk uh, that, that comes around with that. So, you know, obviously information privacy, you know, things that happen around data breach and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it, it, it's vital 
for organizations that if you're going to have a company-owned device or if you're going to have the BYO device, have the infrastructure and the security in the back end to be able to support both and be able to make sure that the information that you're providing to your uh, your staff, your employees, is secure because at the end of the day, if something happens, um, you know, that's going to be your responsibility to deal mm. with. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, you know, all for having options, you know, because we've got, you know, we've got some customers that, that, are, that you know, want to run Apple, um, but, you know, not everyone that comes on board likes Apple. They, they, they may not have gone through, you know, uni or whatever, you know, education. Dirty word. Dirty word. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We don't want anything different. We want the same. That's why we, we, buy, we buy our own computer just so everyone's got the same. So you sort of know where you sit. You know, I don't know about all this three loading, you know, bring your BYO, DD, DD thing. Get it. <laughs> yeah, but, but I think that yeah, the, the main sort of point of it is that, you know, providing both options is fantastic, but having that infrastructure and that security behind to, to make sure that, you know, you're giving access to, to what people need on their personal devices, if that's the way you want to go, um, but also making sure that you've got policies in place. Mm. Um, you know, we've got scenarios where, where organizations at the start of COVID started saying, well, you know, we haven't got laptops, so we want you to use your own personal laptop. We'll give you access to your emails and bits and pieces. You need to make sure that, you, you know, we're, we're going to install a security uh, application on there before you can get access to things. Um, but then they didn't have policies in place to say that, well, hold on, you're now using your personal laptop for work scenario, which means that you're using it more than you normally would. Um, does that then mean that if the battery dies or something dies on it, that you're going to be paying for it because I've, I've used it, you know, more than, than what I normally would, which means that it's died quicker. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, whose responsibility is that? And that's where I think a lot of organisations sort of got a little bit caught out mm. uh, where, you know, they were, you know, use, it, use their own device. You know, they set up security policies as much as they could. Um, but then they also didn't have their internal policies to say, you know, what's the actual use case? You know, can you do this? Can you do that? Yeah. Um, if something happens, are we going to, you know, compensate you for it? Because um, is there a legal, I mean, Alex, from a legal point of view, if, like you, as you said, I mean, we're the same. We, we have our own, I, I provide the infrastructure for everyone. I, I'm not a big fan of bring your own device. I, my preference is to have, that way we've got consistency and there's not conflicting issues. Um but if there is to bring your own device and someone's using it, and look, COVID was a classic example. You just couldn't get equipment to, to be able to provide to people or they couldn't get into the office to take it home. But then when they come back into the office, they haven't got anything there. Is there a legal issue with information being shared that maybe um, someone is grabbing access to information and bringing it onto their own machine mm. personally and then when they exit the business or just holding that data outside of the business network, is there a risk for both yeah. the business and the employee? Yeah, there is. And we, we see it all the time with customer and data poaching. So, you know, when, when, a, when a, an employee leaves, they might be the head of sales. They might have every, all the contact details of all your customers on there. They might have all the pricing information and they might go to a competitor and, and they might share that information. Now, if when they finish up, you can say, okay, well, hand me back your laptop because that's a work if it's a work laptop, have your mm. laptop and your mobile, mm. it's a work mobile and, and possibly your car or whatever else is work equipment. And you know, we give that to we give that to the next employee and that's fine. It's a lot easier to control than if if you're saying, okay, well, you've got your own home, your own laptop, but can you just delete this and that outfit? Or could you, you know, it just becomes, I mean, you think there are things you can get through, but it just becomes very messy and it's certainly much easier to protect um uh data security and and you know and any competitive type conduct if you're um if you're uh if you own the devices and you just hand them back what you want but in the mean way not you know give me a give me you know turn up at the house and say but, you know when you hand back you hand back the work equipment you know, when you go and get equipment from your new work it's just not not nice and neat and tidy whereas if you're you know dealing with your own devices and mobiles are real classic people go well i've got all these all my personal contacts on my mobile which is fine but you know there's this real, you know, kind of grey area of well, what's work and what's personal. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you've got, you know, if you've got a separate mobile and a separate computer, then it's all, all pretty straightforward. So that's this probably a bit outside of our discussion today, but certainly in the kind of poaching area. And poaching so big at the moment, people are poaching staff, and the staff are bringing customer contacts. Therefore, they're poaching customers, and it's it's hard to find staff, so people are headhunting more. So it's becoming bigger and bigger. And certainly for us, IT kind of IT, giving people their own device and then making it secure. And, you know, we can remotely jump on someone's laptop and, and, and remove information if we wanted to. We, we, we don't want to and we won't. But, uh, you know, there's, you can cut people's access off if, if that need be. Dealing like in, in a law firm or a, or a financial advice firm or a lot of companies, you're dealing with 
very personal uh, information that's not yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might very, have sensitive. Very, sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. very sensitive. Very sensitive. Yeah, someone's yeah. passport on your system. You, now you can't have your employee nicking off to a their new place with their past the, someone else's passport on the computer. You know, so and and that's not that's not a fake example. That's a real example of the financial advice litigation that I did over financial advisors nicking information. So I'm sure that had never heard of that, Dave. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But, you know, it's, 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 it's serious, and you know, if they're, they're not, and the, the litigation and the, the expense and the cost and the risk is way out of proportion than just you know a couple of grand for a laptop. Hmm. So, um, uh, so you know, Sebastian, have, what are what are the key like? What are the main things that you see that uh, like an SME perhaps wouldn't address? Like, what are some of the risks that you see within the in, IT infrastructure? Yeah, generally, what we find is that a lot of a lot of businesses, um, a lot of the time, don't really understand where the data is. Um, yeah. You know, they, they go they go and put these systems into place. They go and you know, yeah, you know, my mate told me about this application, and it, yeah. I'll, I'll go and install it. And I'll go and put my data into it, and then, you know, it, it's it's you know, housed in Russia somewhere. Like you don't even know where where you know where, where it's actually stored. Um, so the thing that we find for a, a lot of businesses, unfortunately, is that. Um, you know, they they number one don't have a clear understanding of, of you know where their information is. Um, number two, they don't understand, I suppose, their, their requirements around what needs to happen um, around you know keeping that information secure these days. Um, yep. is, is probably the next one um, where you know organisations will you know set up online stores or they'll set up other bits and pieces. They'll they'll you know they'll get personal identifiable information. Um, they won't know the requirements that they need to have around that. Um, you know, having a good understanding of, of where your data is, um, you know, for a lot of organisations is, is, is key um, because that's what we're finding, I suppose, now and, and more so with all of these, you know, data breaches and everything else that's happening um, is that there's, you know, a lot of businesses that, that's, you know, the big ones that, are, that are hit the media, um, you know, the numbers that, that sort of that, that make mainstream media is one thing, but realistically, um, you know, they're well understated. Um, mm. Number of the number of hackings, the number of you know organisations, and the amount of money that, that people are losing and businesses are losing um, over time because of, because of those sorts of things, and, it, and it's really about you know having a clear understanding of where your data is and and, and you know what you've got in place to, to to secure it. I also think part of it is yes, we need the infrastructure to to, to look at you know what's a, an efficient way to run the business and and for people to have the right equipment. But the other side of it is also, I think, internally some training for yeah. people just to remind them of, of the fact of just how easy it can be that um, information can be released. Some of these hackers that may seem like they're really good, that they're impersonating either one of your customers or, or, or one of your providers and someone's like, oh, no, it seems okay. They sent me this message and I just sent this detail back to them. Just those queries of people looking at stuff and the training internally that says, if it doesn't kind of look right, second guess it, or or at least make a phone call to the individual who's requesting the information. Do, do you see that, or is that part of the stuff that you do? Is can you put training programs, or or at least steer people in the right direction to be able to offer that training? Because I think a lot of people don't know what they don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, and and that's one of the things I suppose, you know, we do offer, you know, training, fishing awareness, those sorts of things. Um, but some of the things that we also do is that, is that we actually fish our customers. So, yeah. you know, to know you gets a monthly report that says, hey, you know, Joe Blog's clicked on a link or they put in their password. Yeah, um, yeah right. And, and, you know, having yeah, that. Yeah, this guy's guy really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've known, but that's for different reasons. Let's not go down that path. Alex, that would be a very long podcast, wouldn't it? Yeah, but- I mean that's very proactive to test to test because you know it's all very well to do training every now and again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sleep through it and you tick a couple of boxes. Come on now, Alex, speak for yourself. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but where where you actually, you know, inter and of course once you've done it, it's too late. Whereas if you get it, you you get really reminds you, and you feel bad when you get busted by Sebastian's. uh, We work out who did it, who didn't, you know, and the person who didn't do it feels pretty good. So <laughs> then, yeah. it's just a real, it's much better than doing a, doing a training course where you get some examples, you know. So you get parked in the naughty corner pretty regularly then, do you? Yeah, I mean, because like, it's a difficult thing for us. I mean, we get sent all sorts of weird stuff by legit clients, you know, what I mean? yeah, they I send know. you a link or they send you some documents or a cloud link or they send you a whatever. 
um, uh, that could all be legit. And of course, you know, so so you do. We do have to be very aware because of the business we're doing. But I mean, everyone does. We all get sent strange things by our, mm. um, our suppliers and by customers. So it's it's, it's a big issue. Yeah. One question I had is, and I sort of alluded to it at the start. Do you is you get, you get an order or something when you first sign up with a provider, but should should we be doing monthly maintenance? Should everyone sort of have a, you know, a, a where you, you upload the latest and greatest on the computer every month or every week or every year? Or, you know, what should people be doing? Because you're talking about pro, being proactive. How do you be proactive in the Canada IT space? Because I know most people are very reactive. If, if, if the computer dies, they, they can't get one or two fixed immediately. <laughs> everything's screwed. Is that is that speaking from experience? Because no, I know, I mean, one of the biggest frustrations for any employee is, is when their IT doesn't work, and they get frustrated very quick, you know, and it upsets them. And you know, and, and obviously, IT people, you know, have to be able to, to be able to respond quickly. But there's only so quickly you can, you can respond. But you know, is there something you can do to make your business much more robust so those things don't happen? Or don't happen as often. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose that's really where it comes in, in regards to, you know, having a provider that comes in and does that for you. Um, you know, like in, in regards to, you know, your updates and your patches of your devices and all those sorts of things, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, minor glitches and things that happen within organisations, um, you know, is, is resolved by an update. Um, it, yeah. It's already been fixed, but you haven't applied it. Um, and, yeah. and again, you know, a lot of small businesses, they've got so much going on. The last thing they want to be doing is going around to 10, 5, 15, 20 computers yeah. and, 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 you know, doing updates, um, yeah. you know, making sure that those systems are running well. Um, you know, our, our applications that we look after our customers, you know, sit and monitor their devices in regards to utilisation. So if we see yeah. that you're, you know, maxing out on, on certain, uh, you know, whether it be, you know, CPU or RAM or, or disk space or whatever it is, we'll come back out to you and say, you know, hey, this is where we're at. You know, you're going to need to look at upgrading your machine in X amount of time right. Right. You when you get to the sort of end of it. And, and those sorts of things are, you know, the things that your provider should be doing for you. Um, right. You know, um, yeah. Making sure that you guys, again, can focus on what you're doing because you, you don't want to be sitting there, you know, going, hey, guys, have you applied for recent updates? You know, there's a security update that came out from Microsoft last night. You know, have you done it yet? Yes, Absolutely. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what you want. Yeah. But that's what I find with people, and and I, I will say that even trying to deal with, um, you know, at home, they're like, oh, this machine's not working. Like, so when was the last time you restarted it? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> I said, well, because it's cloud based, it it, it will it, every time you restart, it will draw down any updates and update the system and reconfigure and recalibrate everything. Oh, well, you know, that just takes time. I said, yes. I know, but if you, the longer you leave it, mm. the longer it takes. But if you do it, I mean, I know some people have the discipline, they turn their machine off or restart their machine. But at the end of the day, they'll shut it down and restart it. So when they come in the morning, it's ready to go. Or someone will have the discipline when they come in the morning, they restart their machine to pick up anything that may have you know, come through overnight. And I think that's a big one for a lot of businesses people just leave the machine on and they don't worry about it it's a bit like your phone i mean people just don't turn their phones off these days mm. but then they have the issue that the patches are not you know put through mm. is that yeah. something that you find as well yeah and, and likewise i suppose you know if you think about it um every time you go to a web page you go to a browser you know you're, 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 you're saving temporary data on your device so you're clogging up certain resources within that device when you reboot it, it freshes that out yeah. So generally what you find is that, you know, we might get a phone call of someone saying, you know, hey, I can't get onto this website or my mouse isn't working or something along those lines. And, you know, we'll, we'll jump onto the system and we'll have a look at the computer and we'll say, you've been running for three weeks straight. There's probably a good reason why that is. <laughs> because the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of updates require an up, like a, a reboot for it to actually finish. So yes. what you probably notice is that, you know, you've got half the update happens before you reboot. The other half happens once you actually reboot itself. So right. You know, that, that a lot of the times, you know, those things will happen where, um, you know, you'll have a lot of things that are backlogged in, in the back end. Yeah. Can you set it up automatically for some businesses that remotely you can come in and just force each machine to reboot? Yeah, you definitely can. So, I mean, look, in regards to, you know, depending on the organisation and the policies and those sorts of things, there are some companies that, you know, choose to have updates applied on a, on a particular day of the week um, and the system will automatically reboot their devices. Others that are you know, more flexible and work longer hours, more remote, you know, have different policies and requirements around that. Mm, yeah. um, but definitely as a user, um, you know, if you're, 
if you've got relatively new machinery and you're not rebooting at least you know every couple of days um, then you will notice some sort of delay you know your webcam might start playing up your, your yeah. audio might start playing up when you're streaming things uh, you, you'll notice that because it's you've got those temporary files that they just clog up in the background yeah uh, as you reboot you're like all of a sudden it's like oh it works yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, one question I had is, is moving, getting some um, resource internally. A lot of our clients have between sort of about 50 staff and about maybe 350 staff. So they're in that kind of, I don't know, you might call it a medium-sized business. And do you have a view, like if you've got 350 computers, should you have your own full-time IT person? Um, the second part of that question is, we, we, I mean, we've had some clients who said they've got their, an internal IT person, it's the best person they ever hired in their life. <laughs> their IT runs a lot more smoothly than it did before. If logistics or they're in, there's a lot of, a lot of pretty much any business, you just can't afford your IT to be down even for five minutes. So if you can stop that, then it makes a, a huge difference. Um, is there a sort of a, do you have a view about like you know how many machines you need before it becomes worthwhile or it just depends? Yeah, again, I think it depends on the size of the organisation. I think every organisation, regardless of whether you're you know a one man, two man, mm. you know five hundred seat organisation, you're going to need some sort of support there. Yeah, uh, whether you know you're a smaller business, you might have someone that does you know remote support and they might be yeah. on call for for incidents yeah. and those sorts of things. Yeah. When you start getting to you know say fifty, a hundred staff. Uh, you might want to have potentially, you know, someone a little bit more junior on site, um, yeah. or you know, we've got resources that we, you know, we put staff out on site once a week, a uh, couple right. of days, yeah. um, those yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. Um, or alternatively, you might have someone on site, but then effectively we've got customers where we do the level two and three and strategy and, and those sorts of things. Yeah. So that they've got their own junior person for, you know, hey, I need my password reset, or yeah. you know, can, can you set up a new laptop for me? Um, yeah. But when it comes to, you know more around development and those sorts of things and longer term strategies, that's where we sort yeah. of play a part as well. So regardless of um, you know what size organization you are, in the world that we are these days, technology plays such a massive role in businesses um, that you'd really be letting yourself down, you know, your customers and everything else if you aren't aware of that and putting some sort of money towards that, um, making sure that you're, you're sort of you know really heading in the right direction. Um, yeah. It's, it's like putting it's, it in the budget, isn't it? It's like anything. I mean, you put certain allocations in your budget because you know you've got to spend the money over the year. To me, part of it is knowing what your capital expenditure needs to be on new equipment. And mm. even from, I mean, part of that also comes back into your tax planning for, mm. for, for your business and in a discussion with potentially with your accountant because of the some of the instant tax write-offs and these sorts mm -hmm. of things. You know, again, bring, bring in good equipment that helps you do the job. I mean, yeah. it's like saying, well, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll cut down that tree. Some bloke turns up with an axe and another bloke turns up with the chainsaw. Mm. Yeah, they're, well. They're, they're both doing the same job. Yeah. But one's well, got a yeah, newer equipment that's going to work better. Budget in for your lawyer as well, I'll just, just say. That's something. That's something. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we didn't have budget for that one. Well, <laughs> it's the largest line item in the expenses is these bloody lawyers. That's to cover yeah. their bar tab. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so is there, there any other kind of um, uh, tips you'd give before we sort of wind up, Seb, about uh, you know what small businesses are doing wrong and how they can get a quick win in IT, how they can improve? You know, what what risks are they just ignoring generally? Yeah, yeah. So, so like I said, really, I, I think you know, getting someone in to ha have a look at what you're doing, um, even sort of going back to that last comment around, you know, how many staff we need to have. Yeah. Uh, even if you've got an individual, that individual can't know everything. You know, yeah. the IT is such a broad space. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like your own industry, you're doing like you've yeah. got different, different, you know, lawyers for different um, functions. Um, yeah. You know, getting someone in to have a bit of a, a, an overview look, um, identify what you know your risks are and what your opportunities are. Yeah, uh, and then you know make some educated and informed decisions. Um, you know, there's no point sort of you know recommending enterprise grade solutions to a small business because there's no way they're going to spend ninety percent of their budget on that. Yeah, yeah. Right. But having a look at something that is going to work and, and suit the business needs, uh, and that's something that a lot of organisations really struggle to do and have a look at, saying, you know, hey, we really need to find a balance between you know security and infrastructure and, and you know keeping people happy, um, as well as you know making sure that it's within budget. So yeah. um, that's probably the main thing, you know, getting a good understanding and making sure that it actually, you know, 
is part of your business plan, making sure that it's part of your business strategy. Um, you know, yeah. you can't sort of run a business without sort of having to think about, well, you know, what am I going to use? Is there new apps that are going to come out? Um, those sorts of things. So, yeah. um, you know, really, really sort of having it, having a good think about it. Um, yeah. is really well. But is it also this balance of, um, and I'm sure Alex is guilty of this, the next shiny thing that, that happens over there. Oh, like, well, my attention is drawn yeah. over there rather I'm than... I'm a very, you know, I'm a very sensible, plan ahead kind of guy. The next shiny thing, no, that's not me. You know, business owners can't help themselves like, oh, yeah. there's a new little toy. Let's have a yeah, look at yeah. that. I mean, that's yeah. part of it as well. I think you've got it because it is. There's so much new technology that keeps coming out and mm. as you say, a new app and this and that. It's like, you know, we've got to let's let's keep our consistent infrastructure in place technology-wise, but if you're going to do it, you might look at something and test it before you then yeah. roll it out to everyone because um, not everyone's comfortable with change all the time. Yeah, can I just say something about that? that that's actually a good point that you raised, Dave. That oh, thanks, Alex. Yeah, that's what you mean to me. But I actually thought, well, you, know, well, you, know, you know, Slack and some of these other apps that where you're, you're, you're um, collaborating with people for workflow and so on, they're exciting and, and I think very good. But what we discovered internally when we were sort of looking at different ways of collaborating because we're working online more is that Outlook, with its existing tasks, you know, the task system on Outlook where you can allocate tasks to people and, and that actually speaks to our practice management system. So each we can look at the tasks on a file that's on our system or you can look at the tasks each person's been allocated. But basically the tasks work absolutely brilliantly for collaborating and we already had that technology, we just didn't, weren't using it. Yeah. So we discovered that, you know, there was a whole bunch of efficiencies to be had without up, without doing anything, just by understanding the technology that we already had and using what it was designed for. I mean, Outlook is actually a really high tech bit of equipment that everyone's got and everyone takes for granted. And we were we were sort of amazed. And now the whole team, you know, can allocate tasks. If someone's up they're sick, you can see what tasks they had and reallocate them to different people and you know, they get reminders in your system and all of that, and it's all very very high tech and we didn't need to get a new app or learn a new system or anything. We just needed to, to use what we already had. And it's getting a better return on that investment too. Yeah, we're already paying for it. And now yeah. we're you know much more efficient. And you know, when you work from home, you're not in the same office, so you do have to have different systems than you did before. Um, um but the systems are actually better. You know, these systems no one can forget. You know, there's none of this post-it note on your screen, Rubby. <laughs> you know, well, there is for some people. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we were we were really we found the task on that just made a big difference. And you know, the, the things that the improvements in, in productivity that technology can give you um, is sort of mind blowing, and you'd be mad not to um, to jump on board. Mm. Um, as you say. Yeah. Well, well, that's probably it. Then is it is it uh, is it Dave? I think so. Unless yeah. Sebastian's got some further comments and words of wisdom for for our audience. No, I, I think that's it for the moment. But um, yeah, it's been uh, been fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, look, we'd like to thank Seb for his uh, involvement today from SSDL. Um, mm. So I would also like to thank Alex from Taurus Legal Management, and he can be contacted via LinkedIn at Alex Martin or via the website tauruslawyers.com.au. Yeah, and I want to thank Dave uh, Murdoch, David Murdoch, the wealth activist from Paxton Bridge, and you can uh, contact him on LinkedIn or on um, at paxtonbridge.com. And our special guest, Sebastian from SSDL, probably the best place is at ssdl.com.au to contact him. We'll also put his notes in the comments on the show. So, sorry, put the uh, his contact details in the comments on the show so you can contact Sebastian. And as I said before, he's a uh, he does our IT and he does a great job, and we uh, we're very appreciative of him. So we can highly recommend. Um, um, SSDL if you need some IT for your SME. Gentlemen, thank you. Cheers and have a lovely afternoon. Thanks. Indeed. See you next time. See ya.